you are just back from China. Do you, uh, were there any any moments that you feel especially touching, or what were the things that impressed you a lot during your China trip? The people I've met who were working around the clock, trying to control the outbreak, and particularly the physicians and nurses and other staff working in hospitals where they were exposed to the virus and became sick and in some cases died. I mean, all of these things are extraordinarily touching. So Professor Zumnan Chen is a friend of mine since 2003. We met during SARS and we met again this time. Uh, and as you know, he's, uh, he's working tirelessly, despite the fact that he's not a young man anymore. And, he's, uh, and we had frank discussions about what it is he felt we needed. And I'm complete agreement with him. He needs better diagnostics so that he can identify who's sick and who's not. He needs treatments and he needs vaccines. He also needs personal protective equipment. These exist because people like to eat exotic meats and because they think they have special medical properties, they don't. They're just risks, not only for China, but for the whole world. 70% of emerging infectious diseases, everything from AIDS to Zika, comes in some way or another out of wildlife. All the evidence that we've seen thus far indicates that this virus came from wildlife. There may have been some intermediate domestic animal, we don't know yet, but it then moved from wildlife into people. It is now spreading person to person very efficiently, and there is no evidence that there was any conspiracy or sloppiness or anything that led to anything coming out of the Institute for Virology in Wuhan. And the scientists there are world-class and they need to be able to do their work because they are trying to contribute to the control of this epidemic.